big advocate reaching out to the African American community and you talk a lot about the uh, disproportionate incarceration of blacks and uh, sort of in that urban area. I think, um, talk to me a little bit about why you feel that that, that is having a negative impact on the family unit. Um, well, I think the thing is, is that some people think, oh, well, that's a really liberal idea. How are you gonna say that in evangelical Christian search churches or at the Republican convention? How are you gonna say things like that? But I think it's absolutely consistent with my conception of Christianity. We believe in redemption. We believe that you get a second chance. And that really, we have to have laws and people will have to be punished for behavior, particularly behavior that hurts other people. But even if we acknowledge we're gonna punish people for bad behavior that hurts only themselves, it needs to be within reason. And it needs to be that we get people back into society and get them jobs. And as I've traveled around and met people who have had this, I'll meet sometimes ministers who in certain places have felony records and can't vote. One, we should let people get back to voting. And instead of all this be about, you know, we want to prevent those people from voting or we want to do this and that, we need to be emphasizing that we want everybody to vote and we want to encourage people, even people who made mistakes, to vote. And I think a lot, if you look at crime, whether it's nonviolent crime or even violent crime, most of it is committed by young men before the age of 25. And uh, I often joke that boys really don't have much of a brain developed till they're 25. And so we have to try to keep them stable until they kind of grow into their maturity. But uh, some of that is giving a second chance. And I don't think I'm alone in that. I, one of the interviews I point out was, this was maybe 10, 15 years ago now, but it was uh, Jerry Falwell, maybe Pat Robertson and Cal Thomas, and they were being asked about drug use alleged drug use of a presidential candidate and they were then asked, well, what if it was a young person in your church? What would you want to do with them? If a teenager was caught with marijuana, would you want them to be incarcerated or counseled? Every one of them, and these are conservative Christian ministers, they all said counseling. And I think that's what most normal people would say. And uh, I'm not sure I'm for getting rid of all the laws. I think Colorado's good. We're gonna find out that there really are problems with marijuana and we're finding out some of that and I think I try to make sure that people know that in saying these things about being reasonable about the punishment, that I don't want any, I'm not anybody to believe that I'm encouraging the behavior because I think the behavior really is harmful. And people who say marijuana has no problems, I think they're wrong also. You talk to people who smoke marijuana every day, they don't do much else. Based on a study by the Justice Policy Institute in 2010, they found that treatment for substance abuse delivered in the community yields over $18 in cost savings for every dollar spent, while incarceration yielded only 37 cents. Right. What policy changes do you advocate that would empower churches and nonprofits to help hurting people in society that are struggling? Right. Well, I think one of the things to acknowledge is that there is a role for the church in this. And uh, I've visited some of the teen challenge places for drug abuse. And what I like about it is they combine work. Everybody works. They live there, which helps. And you don't have any outside influences where you get trapped back in with friends using drugs. And you live in the facility. You work. But there's also a religious component to it because really there's chemical addiction, the body's physically addicted, but there's also sort of a broken spiritual nature of these people. And I think that's part of the rehabilitation. Mm -hmm.